it's gonna be your first time up there. But uh, even though it's your first time up there, you're gonna they're gonna learn to love it. Like it's and it'll only be one time. In the spring of 2019, we left the comfort of southern Quebec and tried to make a reality of an old dream of skiing for the Northeast. After months of continuous planning, we were finally on our way to northern Labrador. There we were, in Maine, a thousand soul settlement within the Henry home territory of Nuna Sebu. As Labrador's northernmost community, the town serves as a base camp for exploring Fraser Canyon and the Comanchet Mountain Range, two promising ski objectives. Bad news awaited us upon our arrival. After several phone calls, we learned that the local hunter we were counting on was stuck out of town, and so we were stuck, making calls and hoping to find a way to get out in the mountains. There's some open water places. Oh, this is the one here, is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's why. We don't have uh, the right information. So. Four days later, things finally lined up as someone agreed to guide us up the hills to our first objective of the trip. Me and what I do in life. Uh, my name is Joey Anatuk. I'm from uh, Nain Nunatsavut, born and raised, been here all my life. I am a uh, fisherman during summer season and winter I was always a uh, avid outdoorsman. I did a, used to do a bit of trapping every year, did a lot of hunting, but everything was all snowmobile. But uh, not no crazy skiers, no. <laughs> Without hesitation, we set up for an honor ride along Fraser River leaving town's comfort for the next four days. Be 
being out on the land defines who I guess Inuit people are. Whether it's just going out and enjoying your surroundings or hunting, hunting is always a big one. I mean, I've always said that this place is a unique part of the earth and uh, we have mountains, we have forests in this area. It's not very far north before you uh, get to the end of the tree line. So I think uh, if the weather was nice, Labrador could have a lot to offer. C'est quoi les, les constats sur les conditions? Mmh. Ouais, c'est dur. C'est dur. <rire> dur. Sous les skis et pour le moral. <rire> ah, c'est de la merde! <rire> Ouais, matin de la deuxième nuit euh, au camp du Canyon Fraser. Euh, on a une petite neige ce matin. Il est tombé peut-être 5 cm selon les estimés. Euh, le vent va finir par se lever. On va venir loader ces faces-là, face nord. Donc euh, on va espérer avoir du ski un peu plus mou qu'hier. C'est pas mal ça. <rire>
pas aller jouer trop dans Céline. C'était gnarly. With increasing snowfall and wind, it was no longer safe to remain in the mountains. Another huge storm was set to hit, and so we decided to make our way back into town to avoid getting stuck. We arrived with a large list of objectives. Le plus important étant le couloir nord de Brave Mountain, le Bishop's Mirt. What dragged us this far north was a picture Tom randomly found on the internet. Très rapidement, on avait des gros enjeux au niveau des ours polaires. On n'est pas trop à l'aise avec ça, mais au final, c'est pas les ours polaires qui sont le Le plus gros problème pour ce couloir-là, c'est euh, le fait que ça soit exposé à l'océan Atlantique Nord directement. Donc, euh, même la glace, ça peut briser à tout moment. Yeah, it's uh, like we always hear on the TV or on the internet, uh, some opposition towards climate change and stuff. And I mean, I always said it and I always will. I mean, if you have the people in the south that are questioning climate change, come to the north and live here for a month. You will see the, the effects that it has on people. It has effect uh, all around, physically, mentally. But I think uh, mentally is probably more so than physically, because, like right now, I shouldn't be here doing an interview. I should be out uh, harvesting ptarmigan or seal or doing what we normally do in April. We came in one time all on sea ice on the outside, came back on the inside, and so um, and the ice had uh, broken off and okay. stuff. So, but uh, yeah, it's a battle. Yeah, it's it's this is the super back country. Yeah, it's bad back back country. I know, like there's back country in Rogers Pass and Alberta. You know, <laughs> this is like this is like, this is the next level. You know. Why? So I come in for that to construct my plan B. Since traveling further north was no longer reasonable, we chose to get a closer look at the hills around town. In the daring of moment, no one's hurry, but no sooner gone. Like the burning of a mountain All the turning of the sun well, I have seen the night town take another day out From the young Thank you.
I saw it too On our way back to town, we randomly met Jonathan and Aaron, two young snowboarders from Nain. So you learn by your own? I learned that by myself. I didn't, I did not shoot up anything, I just took the bird and got That's how they did. Yeah. I went to, uh, I went to a guiding program out there for two years and oh, we yeah? did all the outdoor sports but not at a high level like we didn't do mm -hmm. double black diamond. <laughs> um, this is, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is the kind I have. I, I have them in Nova Scotia now. Oh nice. Uh, oh you have uh, bindings that you can walk too. Yeah of course, yeah, yeah nice. for backcountry, yeah. Yeah, it's good. That, 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 nice. that, 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 it's good. No, I couldn't go with Paul, no. I've never skied with Paul. In BC, we were required to learn basic skiing. At yeah. the program I was in, uh, everyone has to learn the basics of every sport, so we had to learn the basics of, uh, of your sport, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While planning our last day trip, we decided to once again meet up with Noah. Given that we'll be moving north to the Kigalpait Mountains, we will be taking a part of a route that he and his family knows quite well, but for unfortunate reasons. 1959, a lot of uh, Inuit uh, settlements were relocated in, uh, in the 1950s and early 60s. And they should have really asked, really asked the people who were living there, like, do you want to move and here's alternatives? And uh, instead they just like, I'm moving you. And uh, that was really bad. It's gonna be your first time up there, but uh, even though it's your first time up there, you're gonna you're gonna learn to love it. Like it's and it'll only be one time. So if, if you, you know uh, your family was there for hundreds of years or thousands of years, then like you're gonna have such a deep connection to that area. So um, yeah, so uh, you're gonna start a bit of an understanding why people uh, didn't want to move from there. A bit. 